morning, Keystone family and guests. Welcome to everyone who has joined us in person and online. My name is Maureen Hames, and I'm just so happy and honored to be here worshiping with you this morning. For all of our in-person folks, let's remember to keep our masks on while we're in the building, and please continue to practice social distancing while we're together. This morning, we continue our journey toward Christmas in this season of Advent. In our sermon today, we will discover the name Emmanuel and what it means for us today. Our words of meditation this morning, if we could condense all the truths of Christmas into only three words, these would be the words, God with us, John F. MacArthur. Let us prepare our minds and hearts for worship. that are joining us online, I would encourage you to go ahead and grab a candle. Uh, we do this every week. We invite you to grab a candle so that uh, you can remember that you're not just a spectator. You're not just watching TV, but that you are actually participating in worship with those of us that are here in person. So go ahead and grab that candle and light it and place it in front of you as a reminder that the Holy Spirit is with you this morning. And so right now, let's just ready our hearts and our minds to receive all that God has for us this morning in worship. At this time, I'd like to invite the Hames family, if you would come up and, uh, for the lighting of our Advent candle.
Today we turn our attention to the name Emmanuel. This name given Jesus is so powerful as it means God is with us. As Jesus was born into the world, something special happened. God stepped into our world and became human. God is with you and God is with me. The Apostle John tells us of this in John 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In week one, we lit our first candle to remind us that Jesus was royalty. Last Sunday, we lit our second candle to remember that Jesus came to rescue us, as he is our Savior. As we light this morning's candle, we are reminded that God is with us. God stepped into the world and became one of us. He is the light of the world that brings hope to every man, woman, and child. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Because he's Emmanuel, God knows and understands you, including your temptations, your struggles, pain, and afflictions. Because he's Emmanuel, he's able to show you who God is and what God is like. And as Emmanuel, his life proclaims to you that God is with you, always. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, help us to grow more comfortable and trusting in your presence each day so that we can look forward with greater joy and hope to knowing you more completely and being with you through all, all eternity. Amen. Now let us continue to worship together by worshiping to our song of praise. Come, Emmanuel. Come, come, Emmanuel, son of God, appear. Heaven and earth rejoice, salvation is drawing near. Salvation is drawing near. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Come, come, Emmanuel, Son of God appear. Heaven and earth rejoice, salvation is drawing near. Salvation is drawing near. Oh, come, O oh, wisdom from on high, who ordered all things mightily. To us the path of knowledge show, and teach us inner ways to go. Come, come, Emmanuel, Son of God, appear. Heaven and earth rejoice, salvation is drawing near. Salvation is drawing near. O come, O rod of Jesse's stem, from every foe deliver them that trust your mighty power to save and give them victory o'er the grave. Come, come, Emmanuel, Son of God, appear. Salvation is drawing near, salvation is drawing near. Rejoice, Emmanuel. 
so good to have you with us. I would invite all of you to come and get closer to your TV or screen or wherever you're watching from uh, for our children's chat this morning. And uh, I wanted to ask you, well, I have a riddle for you this morning, a riddle, and I want you to see if you can figure out the answer. But here's the riddle. Are you ready? Here we go. When you were born, you were each giving something that is very important to you. It is something that you can use now, it's something that you will use for the rest of your life. The thing that you were given at birth is something that you share with others. In fact, if you never share this gift with anyone, then, well, it cannot be used. Can you guess what gift I'm talking about? Can anyone guess? Your name, exactly. It's your name. You see, when each of you were born, you were given a name. And that name is very important. So why don't everybody, why don't you tell me what your names are? Just go ahead and tell me your names. All right, good. Yeah, so my name is Rick. And, uh, and so my given name, though, the name that I was given when I was born is Richard. Richard Allen Connor Jr. And, uh, and so many names, like my name, uh, we were all given a name, and God told Joseph and Mary that they were about to have a baby and that they were to name him Jesus. And you know what Jesus means? It means the Lord saves. That's a really important name. Now, you probably have nicknames too. So I had lots of nicknames when I was growing up. Um, one of the nicknames that I didn't like very much was Ricky Ticky Tabby. And uh, it was based on a cartoon back then. And everyone used to call me Ricky Ticky Tabby. You knew when that cartoon came on TV because the next day everyone was calling me Ricky Ticky Tabby. And I hated that name. But you probably have some nicknames too. Why don't you share some of your nicknames? Go ahead, share some of your nicknames. All right, so we all have nicknames. And uh, so my wife, I gave her a nickname. Her nickname is Beautiful. And that's a very smart nickname to give to your wife. And uh, so uh, we all have nicknames. Well, Jesus, he had other names too. And uh, he was called, one of those names was Emmanuel. Can you say that with me, boys and girls? Emmanuel. And that means God is with us. And Jesus is given a lot of other names in the Bible. And all of them, every one of those names, tells us something about him. You know, my name, Richard, means lion-hearted. It means that I'm a strong leader. That's what my name means. And uh, in the Old Testament, there, in the book of Isaiah, Jesus is called Wonderful Counselor. And that means that he would be someone who was wise and could give really, really good advice and comfort. Someone that we can go to with all of our problems. Another name that he's called in the Old Testament is Mighty God. And that means that He's powerful and He rules over everything. Jesus is also called the Prince of Peace, meaning that He's a ruler that doesn't rule with force, but that rules with love and, and brings peace to people. You know, all of these names, boys and girls, tell us a little bit more about who Jesus is. But during Advent and during Christmas, the name of Jesus that we think about the most is the name Emmanuel. And during Advent, we even sing him. We just sang a song called, Come, Emmanuel. There's another one that we sang a few weeks ago called, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. The baby that was born at Christmas was God himself coming to us and coming to live here on earth with us. Emmanuel, now that may sound like a strange name because it's not a very common name today, but it reminds us of something very important. 
that when we invite Jesus into our hearts, boys and girls, that God is right here with us. And I think that's some really amazing news for us this Christmas, that Emmanuel reminds us that God is always, always with us. So why don't we pray to the name of Jesus, and why don't we ask him to be with us today? Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for today. And God, we pray that you, Emmanuel, would come and live in our hearts today. Thank you for being with us, and thank you for being uh, and coming to our world, Lord, at Christmas. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, boys and girls. Well, the next time you think of your name, maybe you also think of the names of Jesus and how every single name tells us a little bit something more about who Jesus is. Now, I want to remind you before we leave today, I want to remind you that you can go ahead and uh, watch Keystone Kids online. You just go on YouTube. And if you'll just search Keystone Kids Online, you'll find our YouTube channel and you can watch our virtual Sunday school that doesn't happen just on Sundays, but it happens every day of the week. So join all the friends at Woodlawn Chapel and have a great an experience with Miss Christina and with all those amazing friends that she has. I hope that you'll join us for that on YouTube. Again, Keystone Kids Online. So have a great week. Be safe at school. Remember to wear your mask and we'll see you soon. Have a great day. Isn't it good to know names mean something? And every one of your names means probably something as well. And But the name Emmanuel, what a special name that we're going to be focusing on today and being reminded of the reality that God is with us always. And because he's with us always, we can go to him anytime and have conversation with him in prayer. And so that's what we're going to do right now in our time of worship. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And I would just invite you to bow your heads and pray with me. And those of you online, do the same. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you this morning for this gift that we have to gather together virtually or in person for worship. Lord, to come and to adore you, to be like the shepherds and the wise men that came to the manger and bended down on their knees and worshiped you, the King Jesus. Lord, what an exciting time for us to be in, a time of Advent, a time of preparation, a time for us to get excited about the coming birth of you, Jesus. Lord, we just ask that this morning that you would fill us. God, you would fill our cups to overflowing with that excitement, that excitement of Advent, the coming of Christ the King. Lord, would, you, would we leave here different today than when we came because we have had an experience, an encounter with Emmanuel. Father, we thank you for this gift. And Lord, we want to pray this morning. God, we pray for many different things. There's tons of things on our hearts and minds this morning. Father, we think of people that we care about that are sick and are recovering from an illness or a surgery. And Lord, we pray for their healing today. God, we pray that you would be the great physician in their lives and bring healing. Father, we pray for the many, many people that are out there that are experiencing depression and loneliness and anxiety like never before. And Father, that they would know that you are Emmanuel, that you are with them, that they are not alone in this crazy time. And Father, we think of all the many people that have no relationship with you at all, Father, they're trying to navigate through all of the different things that are happening uh, in, our, in our world, and they're trying to do it without you. And Father, I can't imagine trying to live this life that we are living right now without Emmanuel, without you being with us. And so, Father, we lift up those people that have no relationship with you. God, we pray. We pray that you would put people in their paths that would introduce them to you. And Father, if it's someone watching online or someone in this room, Father, we pray that you would give them the courage to do that, the boldness to share, to be you for them. Father, we 
We think of our country and our nation and all the things that are happening in it. And today, just today, Lord, this vaccine is being distributed to the many different states. And the beginning of this vaccine begins to happen and so in our country. And so, Father, we pray. God, we pray for the effectiveness of this vaccine. God, we pray that, uh, that it would be traveling safely to all the different states of the United States. And Lord, that it would be um, distributed in a way that is best for everyone, Lord. Father, we pray um, for our church. Lord, we pray that this church would be a beacon of light, a beacon of hope. That Lord, even as people drive by Racetrack Road, that they would know, they would get a sense that this is a place where Emmanuel dwells. That this is a place where they can experience your love and your safety and your joy and your hope and your comfort. Father, we, we thank you for the opportunity to come together. And God, we pray that we as your people, Lord, that we would continue to live our lives in such a way that we put others before ourselves. God, that we would not live selfishly, but Father, that we would live uh, thinking of the people around us and thinking of others and putting their needs before our own, Lord. God, thank You for Emmanuel. Thank You for sending Jesus so that we might experience more of who You are through Him. And so, Lord, now as we come together, we pray as a community of faith, we pray that prayer that you taught your disciples to pray so, so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for uh, praying with me. And I just want to remind everyone that uh, prayer is something that we find very valuable here in, in, at Keystone United Methodist Church. And we, uh, we encourage you to live a life of prayer. And now we want to continue to worship uh, by preparing to uh, prepare our hearts and minds for our offering this morning. And you know, in this season, one of the most important things that we can do or one of the most important ways we can prepare uh, will happen here in our hearts when we make a way for God to come into our lives, when we prepare the way for the Lord. And in the midst of our preparations, we bring gifts we bring gifts to share so that God's love will shine brightly through the ministry of this church and in our own lives as well. And so this morning, let us gather our gifts together and prepare to present them as an offering to God. And as we do, I just want to simply remind you that you can give in one of four different ways. Uh, you can give by dropping your offering, uh, off, offering off in the offering boxes as you leave today. Uh, you can mail in your offering. Uh, you can also give online. Or you can text KUMC to 73256. And so many different ways that you can give. And as you prepare, and as you prepare to give this morning, let us offer our prayers of thanksgiving, which will be found on the screen below me. Let's pray this together. Accept our thanks and praise, O God, for you generously give to your people. May we become those who not only give generously, but live generously sharing the bounty of your gifts and grace with all that we meet. Through Christ we pray. Amen and amen. Well, as we continue in the heart of, of giving, uh, we're going to enjoy uh, a, a, a gift of music as Bob Sacco leads us in our offertory, which is Some Children See Him. Some children see him lily white 
the baby Jesus born this night. Some children see him lily white with dresses soft and fair. Some children see him bronzed and brown. The Lord Some children see him rise the ground with dark and heavy hair. Some children see him all in night. The Savior whom we knew beside. Some children see him on the night with skin of golden hue. Some children see him dark as day, sweet Mary's son to whom we pray. Some children see him dark as day, and oh. They love him too. The children in each different place will see the baby Jesus face like theirs, but bright with heavenly grace and filled with holy. Oh, lay aside each earthly thing, and with thy heart is offering. Come worship now the infant king. Tis love that's born tonight. Tis love. That's born I want to thank Bob for uh, that great song. Boy, what a song. Uh, that was amazing. Thank you, Bob. And uh, so today, uh, before we jump into our sermon, I just wanted to uh, say a word of thanks. Uh, yesterday, if you aren't aware, we had our um, Keystone Kids Express uh, drive-in Christmas experience. And, uh, and Christina did an amazing job. And so we want to give Christina a big hand and thank her. Uh, she's watching online, uh, so I know she heard that, and I appreciate that. And also all the volunteers, like many of you volunteered. I want to thank you. Let's give all of our volunteers a big hand. Um, yesterday, if you were to come down Racetrack Road, if you were to come uh, right around the roundabout, you would see this bright glow on Racetrack Road, and that was the 
Keystone Kids Express drive through experience. And we had a, a lot of folks say, wow, what a great experience. Someone on Facebook said um, we get, each child got a little ornament. And she took, sent us a picture of her child hanging the ornament on her Christmas tree. And uh, so just a great experience. And, and the whole point of the whole drive through experience was, do you believe? And we asked people the question, do you believe? And uh, so it was a beautiful thing, and uh, so I appreciate all the hard work that Christina and her, and her volunteers did yesterday. And uh, so as we get ready to jump into our morning series, our morning message, I just invite you, let's invite God to, to come and to inspire us and to encourage us and challenge us this morning. Would you pray with me? Father God, uh, we do thank you for the gift of your word. Uh, God, this book, the Bible, has everything in it that we need for salvation and how to live the Christian life. God, so we're grateful that you have given us this gift in your word. And Father, we pray this morning as we pray every Sunday that you would come and you would remove the scales from our eyes, you would unplug our ears, and you would soften our hearts so that we could see, hear, and know exactly what it is, Lord, that you have for us this morning because we believe that you have a word for each of us. You have a word of encouragement, a word of challenge, a word of uh, revelation for all of us here this morning, and we don't want to miss that. So, Father, may we prepare our hearts and minds to hear your word. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, there was an uh, art contest, contest that was held in a local school during the Christmas holidays a few years ago in East Texas. And one of the prize winners uh, was a picture drawn by a nine-year-old boy showing three men offering gifts to the baby Jesus in a manger. But what made this picture so, so unique is that the three gift presenters arrived in something a little unusual. You see, there was a fire truck on the side of the picture. And the principal asked the boy about his decision to draw the fire truck. And the boy, in his heavy East Texas accent, was quickly to reply, Well, the Bible says that the wise men came from afar. But <laughs> shh. So today, <laughs> thanks Lorna. <laughs> so today, we continue our sermon series on the titles of Jesus, based on the book Incarnation by Pastor Adam Hamilton. And the title uh, used by the angels, titles that were used by the shepherds, titles that were used by the wise men and prophets and the gospel writers to describe the birth of this child that we celebrate this month. And the first week we looked at the royal titles of Christ and Messiah, and we discovered that these two titles, Christ and Messiah, meant the anointed king. And so we recognized that Jesus was born to be a king. Last week we looked at the title of Jesus as Savior, and the good news of great joy that in the city of David was born a Savior. And we talked about what it means to be a savior and what exactly did Jesus come to save us from today we are going to talk about a title well that only appears three times in the Bible twice in the book of Isaiah and then once in the book of Matthew and it's the title Emmanuel now Emmanuel is the combination of two words in the Hebrew language that makes the title God is with us and this becomes a title for Jesus that, well, Matthew borrows from the Old Testament. And the Gospel writer Matthew is getting this title from the prophet Isaiah in the book of Isaiah and in Isaiah chapter 7. And if you go back and you study the book of Isaiah, especially in chapter 7 and beyond, the passage close, if you study it closely, you can see the historical background of this story of this prophecy that is being made. You see, it's 735 BC. Christ hasn't shown up on the scene yet, and a huge crisis is exploding onto the scene. The Assyrian Empire at the east end of the Fertile Crescent is rising. It's becoming a world superpower. Actually, it's the first world superpower. You see, the Assyrians, well, they're the new bullies in town, if you will. And they're taking over everything and anything they see. And if you were one of the kings in that area, well, to be honest, you would have been terrified of the Assyrians. And you would have been asking yourselves, what do we do? Like, what do we do to protect ourselves? 
And it would only make sense to begin to form an alliance with other kings and other kingdoms around. Because maybe together, you'd have a chance to withstand this new and very brutal empire. And so the nations around Judah, where Jerusalem was, the nations of Israel and Aram, well, they start to form one of those alliances. But there's one that's holding out, and that's King Ahaz in Judah, uh, in Jerusalem. So the coalition of, of Israel and Aram, well, they decide, well, we're just going to have to get rid of King Ahaz. I mean, we're just going to have to get rid of him, dethrone him, and get Judah on board because the Assyrians are coming. And King Ahaz is terrified in Isaiah chapter 7. He's got the Assyrian Empire on one side, and then he's got this coalition of the northern kingdoms on the other side. So he's basically stuck between a rock and a hard place. And when two kings surround you, well, they have a technical name for that. It's called your toast, right? I mean, he's in serious trouble. And Ahaz is in the crisis of his life as a king. But thank God that God sends a prophet to help Ahaz. And the prophet's name is Isaiah. And Isaiah, well, he has a really simple message for King Ahaz. And the message is this. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God. That's the message. That he tells him to trust God. You see, Isaiah tell, tells Ahaz that the plan plans against him will not and cannot succeed because God is with him. Now I want you to imagine that you're facing a major crisis in your life. Maybe you just lost your job or maybe you had a really bad medical diagnosis or maybe you're in the midst of a financial crisis or, or, or some other crisis in your life. And a prophet comes to you and a prophet tells you, don't be afraid. God has this. All you have to do is trust Him. And I'm sure that you would be thinking the same thing that King Ahaz was thinking. How can I trust God? He was thinking to Isaiah, he's like, Isaiah, I need a little bit more than a promise that I can trust God. And so God tells Ahaz, He says, listen, Ahaz, I have a plan. That there would be a virgin who would have a child and they would call that child Emmanuel. And before this child reaches the age of 12 or 13, the two nations of which Ahaz is scared of would cease to exist. And so Ahaz is very afraid. But God was with him. And Isaiah promised that God, as a symbol of God's presence, that there would be a child named Emmanuel that would be born. And before that child reaches teenage years, that those two kingdoms would cease to exist. And you know what happened? Twelve years later, twelve years later, the Assyrians crushed both of the kings of the northern kingdoms that threatened King Ahaz. God was with them. And you know, the same is true today, church. And I really want you to hear this. That there is a ton of turmoil going on in our world, in our country, in our own homes, as we continue to deal with this pandemic and all the other things that are going on. And yet we must remember, Emmanuel, that God is with us. Just like in the days of King Ahaz in Jerusalem, God has a plan for this world. And He is working it out. And no one or nothing can stop it. Not COVID-19, not racism, not an election, not anything can stop God's plan. His plan for this world is going forward. And I think we need to be reminded of that. His plan is going forward. And we need to trust God. And we need to look to Him and be reminded that God is with us. Why don't you just say that with me? God is with us. So Matthew quotes in our passage today, he quotes from this passage of Scripture in Isaiah. And let me just read to you from Matthew chapter 1, verses 22 through 23. It says, This took place 
to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. Now that first Emmanuel, the one that Isaiah was prophesying about, was just an ordinary baby and was a sign to Judah that God was going to be with his people. But what Matthew is recognizing here in our passage this morning is something much, much more significant. Jesus wasn't just an ordinary baby. He just wouldn't be a baby who would be a sign that God was going to be with his people. That baby was God. He was God. God actually came down here to be with His people in Jesus. He took on human flesh. And that's what the word incarnation means. It means to take on flesh. And as Christians, we believe that Jesus is God who came and walked on this earth in human flesh. And that begs the question, well, how in the world did that happen? Like, how do we explain that Jesus was fully God and fully human? Well, in our tradition, we believe that. We believe that God was fully God and fully human. And it's easy for us to understand that God would show up in a person. You know, Hollywood has even helped us with the films like Bruce Almighty and Evan Almighty, right? Like God shows up in the form of a human person named Morgan Freeman. And forevermore, we will see God as Morgan Freeman because of those movies. But as Christians, we don't believe that God just showed up as a form of a human. We believe that God actually became one of us. And this is the scandal of the incarnation. That God was miraculously conceived as a baby in the womb of a virgin. And week by week, that baby began to develop in the womb. And when it was finally born, it was an ordinary baby. And yet somehow, there was the essence of God within this child. God came down here on earth as a helpless child born in a barn to a couple who were virtually homeless who would end up having to flee because Herod wanted to kill the baby. This baby begins to grow up. And as he grows into a toddler, he goes from crawling to walking. And as he grows from a toddler into a young boy, he runs and he falls and he skins his knee. He cries and he bleeds. This boy has friends and he has those that make fun of him. As a teenager, well, he probably had pimples and crushes. And he was an ordinary human being. But at the same time, he was God in the flesh. Later on in Jesus' public ministry that we read about in the Gospels, we read that he experienced hunger, that he ate with people, that he loved, that he hurt. Sometimes he even got angry. He got frustrated and was tempted. And in all of this, he was a human being and somehow God at the same time. Fully God and fully human. You know, our church fathers have been trying to explain this for centuries. And they've used many different ways to explain how Jesus could be fully God and fully human. I have two master's degrees and I feel like I'm a relatively smart guy. And this still is a mystery to me. And I'm okay with that. And I hope you are too, that there are just some things about God that remain mysteries. There's some things that we cannot fully understand. The Bible even tells us that God's ways are not our ways and that our mind can't imagine all the things of God. So what's the point? If Jesus was God and actually came to us in human flesh, which is what we believe, then I believe that has three really important implications for us. And I would encourage you to write these down. The first one is this. That God knows and understands you. He knows you and He understands you. Because He's walked in your shoes. 
God came and chose to walk in our human shoes to experience exactly what we experience. He knows what it's like to hurt. He knows what it's like to cry. Jesus wept and He bled. He knows what it's like to be hungry. He felt desire. He was tempted. And the point of Emmanuel is that, well, He understands us because He's been us. He knows the sting of the betrayal of a friend. He knows loneliness. He knows what it's like to feel forsaken by God as He hung on the cross and He said, My God, my God, why have You forsaken me? He knows what it's like to feel tortured. He knows what it's like to be afraid. He knows what it's like to die. You see, when you come to God, church, you come to a God who understands because He's walked in your shoes. He knows your weaknesses. He understands why you were tempted and why you gave in to that temptation. He understands why you feel alone. He understands why you grieve when you lose a friend and why you're crying even though you believe in the resurrection. Listen, when you pray, you pray to the One who fully understands you. The author of Hebrews put it this way, in Hebrews chapter 4, he said, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been, tempted, has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive the mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You see, you and I, we can pray in boldness and confidence because God understands what it's like to be us. And that's part of what Emmanuel means to me. Second, Jesus came not only to understand us, but He came as a human so we might know who Jesus is. God came in flesh, down here in flesh, so that we might get to know who God is. You see, as Jews and Christians and Muslims, we believe that God is invisible and immortal and there is this struggle that we have of praying to a God, a God that we cannot touch, a God we cannot feel, a God we cannot see or smell. So God finally says, well, maybe if I come like them, that maybe they will understand me. That if I become one of them. And so He comes. And when you and I, when we look at Jesus, guess what? We see God. Then when we read the Gospels and read about who Jesus was and the character of Jesus and who He was and what He did and how He lived, that is who God is. And so He comes to help us to see who He is. Paul says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Hebrews says that He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. In John's Gospel, Jesus repeatedly says, if you've seen the Father, you've seen, if you've seen Me, you've seen the Father. Because the Father and I are one. Jesus is God. And God is Jesus. And when I think of God, I think of Jesus. And I think of Him sitting with sinners and eating with tax collectors. I think of Him touching the lepers who were untouchable. I think of the compassion that He showed to the prostitute that wept at His feet. When I think of Jesus, I think of what He said when He said, I have come to seek and save those who are lost. So when I pray to Jesus, I pray to God. And that's part of what Emmanuel means to me. And finally... Jesus is an expression that God is actually with us. Jesus reminds us that God is actually with us. Matthew begins his gospel with Emmanuel. God is with us. But do you know how he ends his gospel? The last verse of the last chapter of the gospel of Matthew says, I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. 
So he begins the same way he ends. And this is so comforting to me, especially in these times that we're living in right now, that God was with us in the very beginning and he's still with us now. No matter what happens, he will always be with us. You know, we have a dog uh, at home, Mr. Wilson. And uh, Mr. Wilson is just a huge part of our family. He's a Rhodesian Ridgeback. He's a big dog. But before Mr. Wilson, I had another dog, uh, a Dalmatian named Dottie. And Dottie was just this little ball of energy. And she was the epitome of the, the dogs that you watch in 101 Dalmatians, the Disney's movie. She just was everywhere. She was bouncy. She was all over the place. She was my shadow. She would follow me all through the house. Everywhere I go, she would be on my heels. She would sleep with me at night. She would, uh, she would, um, she would even try and get up on my lap. Like, that's the place she wanted to be. I mean, she was probably a 30-pound dog sitting on my lap. And, uh, and she was just an amazing dog. And I remember uh, going to church one Sunday and then coming, uh, and Dottie was fine. And then I came home uh, from church and Dottie, uh, she couldn't um, walk anymore. She was, she was crawling on the floor, like her back hind parts were just not working at all. She had lost all uh, ability to control her, 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 uh, her, her bowel movements and everything. I mean, she was just making a mess everywhere. And, and so I took her to the vet. And, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. We gave her medicine, nothing worked. And for two weeks, this dog lived in misery. And so we had to make the hard choice to put our dog down. And it was a hard choice. And I remember my mom, I, my mom went with me. She was like my moral support. And, and, and I remember going to the vet and I, I scooped Dottie up out of the back seat and I took her into the vet. And, uh, and they had a room already prepared for her and we, we laid her down on the table. And, and I remember I just, I curled up on the table with her. And as they injected her, I just was whispering in her ear, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And I petted her until she fell asleep, just whispering, it's going to be okay. And when I think about the incarnation, when I think about Emmanuel, that's what I think about. That Jesus wraps his arms around us. And he says, it's going to be okay. I'm here. I'm by your side. You're safe. And it's going to be okay. No matter what. It's going to be okay. You know, this week, one of my good friends, she tested positive for COVID-19. And, and at first, she had mild symptoms. And I was, just, uh, I was just checking on her. And I would text her daily, hey, how are you doing? And, and so a few days went by. And, and by Thursday it got really bad. Like things went from, oh, I just have mild symptoms. I can't taste things. I can't smell things. Uh, I'm tired. And it just turned to the worse. And she began to uh, struggle with breathing. And, and things got really hard and really dark. And, and I remember texting her. And, uh, and, and I reminded her, I said, listen, I want you to remember that in the midst of this, God is with you. It's going to be okay. And she texted me back. And she said, you know what? Yesterday was bad. But I felt okay about it because I felt Jesus. He was with me. Amazing. That's Emmanuel. God is with us even in those dark moments. That's incarnation. And you know what, church? Your calling and my calling as believers is to incarnate His love for other people. We are called to incarnate His love to others. You are to put flesh and bones on to the love of God and the reality of God. You are to show other people who God is and that He really loves them. And you do that by your actions and you do that by your words and you do that by how you love other people. Just like I did with Dottie. It's going to be okay. You see, you incarnate His love to others when you feed the hungry, 
You incarnate His love to others when you listen to the hurting. You incarnate His love to others when you share a meal with a stranger or when you give of your time or when you build friendships with sinners. You incarnate the love of God to others. This week, uh, um, Lisa met a guy named Mark or Marco. We're not sure which one it is. But out in the parking lot, she met a guy and, and he was having a really bad time. I mean, things were dark in his life right then, and he needed somebody. And Lisa listened to him. And Lisa called me. He wanted to talk to a pastor, and I called Marco, and, and I listened to him. And Marco was just saying, I was just reminding him, like, hey, Mark, man, it doesn't matter. God loves you. He goes, no, you don't understand. I've done things that are horrible. I've done things that you can't imagine. Like, there's just, I, I'm a horrible person. I'm like, it doesn't matter. God loves you no matter who you are, no matter where you've been, no matter who you've become. And Lisa told him the very same thing. And the next day, Marco called Lisa. And she told Lisa, she said, I just want you to know that, that you and your pastor, you don't know how powerful just you guys being present in my life were to me. You see, that's the incarnation. That's incarnating the love of God to others. Sometimes it's just listening. Sometimes it's just whispering in someone's ear, it's going to be okay. And so as Emmanuel, God reminds us that it's always, that He's always, always, always with us. And He is calling us as His church to go in His name and to incarnate the love of God to every man and every woman and every child. So this Christmas, this Advent, let's remember Emmanuel. Let's remember that God is with you in the midst of your struggles. God is with you in the good times and in the bad. God is with you and even in the darkest of times. And that He has called us to go and to be His hands and His feet, to put flesh and bones to His love to the people that we meet out there. May we be the incarnate of Jesus for others. Would you pray with me? Father God, we do thank you for Emmanuel, for reminding us today that you are always with us. God, that you understand us because you've lived in our shoes. Father, that you came so that we might know more of you. God, that Jesus came to be an everlasting reminder that you are with us. And Father, may we have the boldness and the courage to be the incarnate love of your, your love for others out there. God, thank you for always being with us. In your name we pray. Amen. I want you to know that I got a text this morning from my friend and she said that she is feeling more human today than she has felt all week and that, that God is bringing healing to her body. Uh, and uh, so that is good news. But today, uh, may we remember Emmanuel. May we just be mindful that God is always with us. And may we remember that other people need to know that God is with them too. And so let's stand this morning uh, with that in our minds and our hearts. And let us worship to our closing song, um, Angels We Have Heard on High. And uh, as we sing, uh, sing to ourselves or quietly hum this, um, may we just allow the spirit of Emmanuel to fill us.
be seated. Just a few announcements before we receive our prelude this evening, our postlude, sorry. Uh, tonight is Vespers at 7 o'clock, so we invite all of you to join us online on Facebook Live uh, at Keystone United Methodist Church. Uh, the Connors will be hanging out in their family room uh, with the Christmas tree, sharing some Christmas carols as well as some words of encouragement. So all of you are invited to join us uh, again at 7 o'clock on Facebook. I also want to remind you that we have our Christmas food baskets. And so if you would like to bring a food basket for our, um, our food pantry families that are in need, we'd love for you to do so. Jerry has some lists for you as you leave today. Uh, you can get one of those from her uh, that has the items that are needed for our Christmas baskets, which are a little different from our Thanksgiving baskets. So uh, make sure that you grab one of those lists if you'd like to participate in that. And then again, I just want to say thank you one more time to Christina and all the volunteers who helped out with our Keystone Kids Express. And so now receive this postlude. We especially want to thank you, those that joined us online. And now would you receive the benediction. May the blessings of God, the love of Jesus, and the presence of the Holy Spirit strengthen you and encourage you as you go out from here to live lives of the incarnate. And all of God's people said, amen. Amen. At this time, we'd like to dismiss uh, this side. If you all will exit from the back row first, heading up. And, uh, and at this side, if you all will exit from the front row, working your way back towards this exit. And thank you again so much, and we will see you next week.